Hi everybody, Grandad here again. And what am I up to today? Well today, I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, a local uh, hero, I suppose he might be co considered a hero. He was certainly very famous in Shropshire. And uh, just to start off the uh, little video, I want to show you this picture. Now this picture shows a... Uh, this is... Uh, my father used to make things back in the day. He was very keen on making uh, birdhouses. Now this is a bird box he made. You see it's very elaborate. It's built uh, in like a single story uh, black and white cottage. And it's got a lovely thatch roof. He was very good at thatching. And he made a lovely thatch roof on it. And he made lots of these uh, birdhouses and give them away to people. He didn't sell them. He just give them away. Got, they were only made out of old boxes and bits and pieces that he got lying around and he liked making them. So he made lots of these birdhouses. And they were all about. Now, the interesting thing about that is that he called it Old Parr's Cottage. Now, Old Parr, or Thomas Parr, was a famous man in Shropshire and he lived at a place called uh, Wollaston, which is uh, not 20 miles from where I live now, in Oswald Street, over towards Shrewsbury, Welshpool Road. And it's quite easy to find. Unfortunately, it, the original house of Thomas Parr uh, burnt down in a fire uh, because they turned into a bit of a museum at one time after he died and uh, for a long time it was there as a museum he would go and visit it and find out about Old Parr and uh, unfortunately it burnt down but they have renewed it and uh, it's a modern built house now so it's still there but it isn't the original house but it's, they don't mind you visiting I don't think you go and see it's not a museum anymore it's a private house so I don't know whether you thought but the people are very nice to live there and they tell you the story of Old Tom. Now Thomas Parr was uh, he, uh, his claim to fame wasn't uh, any uh, because he got a marvellous brain or because he was uh, very famous in any other way. He was just a common garden uh, farm labourer. He wasn't, didn't even have a good job. And he was considered quite a poor man, I suppose, in his time. But he lived back in 1940, uh, 1483, he was born, apparently. And uh, he, he was just a, a simple farm worker, as I say. He worked hard all his life. And his only claim to fame was he lived very long. In fact, he lived 152 years, if you can believe that. And if that's true, then uh, Thomas Parr is probably the oldest man, certainly in England, and possibly the world. Because people today, they're lucky if they live to 120. I think there's one or two people who live 120. But 152 is quite, a, quite an age to live. And Thomas Parr apparently lived, uh, lived that. I mean, records weren't very good back in the day, so uh, there may have been a little bit of confusion as to uh, when he was actually born. But he was certainly a very old man. And to live over 40 or 50 back in those days was quite remarkable. So to live to well over 100. And uh, he had quite a remarkable life in a sense. He got married four times. He married after he was 100 years old. And he had a few children. I think some died in infancy. But there may still be relations out there somewhere of Thomas Parr uh, wondering about whether they lived to a ripe old age. I don't know. But he lived a very simple life. He, he, he worked hard, as I say. He, uh, he worked on the farm and uh, got good, good fresh air in his lungs and lots of exercise. And he, he had a very simple diet. He just lived on cheese and uh, fermented cheeses and different things like that and very wholesome vegetables and... He, he, he lived what we could call a very very good diet for, for his time and uh, it kept him going and by some means or other he managed to live to a ripe old age. Now I've got a picture of him here if I can just bring it up but uh, because he was famous and he got famous quite quite you know people uh, wanted to know about Thomas Parr and I've got a picture of him here it's not a terribly good picture it's on my uh, camera I took it off another YouTuber's picture but there's Thomas Parr and as it says he when he lived 1483 uh, to uh, what is that 16 1639 I think it says that it's all backwards from what I can see there but if, uh, but that's what he looked like and that's quite a good portrait of him because uh, what happened was a chap by the name of uh, Thomas Howard another Thomas uh, got to, found out about uh, old Tom and uh, he was interested in the fact that he was very old, so he, he visited him. He came to Shropshire and visited him. And he was so impressed with this, the wit and the, and the uh, entertainment that this old man gave to him and the stories he could tell. Uh, he thought, he said to him, I think the king would like to meet you, because uh, Thomas Parr was a friend of the king, who was Charles I at that time. 
And as we know, poor old Charles I didn't, <laughs> didn't do very well. He got himself involved with Oliver Cromwell in the Civil War back in the day and uh, old Oliver Cromwell eventually, after a lot of battles with uh, the English Civil War, he took old Charles I's head. <laughs> so he was one of the kings that got beheaded, so uh, he didn't fare very well anyway. But uh, he was very interested in Thomas Parr and he said, yeah, bring him down to London and visit me. So uh, they set off from Wollaston in Shropshire, and in, back in those days the carts and roads were very poor and he must have had uh, a very bad journey because apparently he was pretty well blind by this time. I don't know how, how well he could see, but he, he obviously didn't have glasses in those days, so he couldn't see very well. So he had a very arduous day and it would have taken weeks to get to London back in the day. Now, obviously that didn't do Thomas Parr much good, so he's probably exhausted by the time he got there and uh, change of scenery and change of lifestyle didn't suit him and uh, the king was very interested in him and all that and he thought he was a wonderful man but uh, they wined and dined him and fed him on posh food and gave him all sorts of wine and anything he wanted they gave it to him and as I say the king was so impressed he even had that portrait painted so it's a good likeness I would think of what Thomas Parr actually looked like back in, that, uh, back in the day so uh, they took him to London, but he didn't fare very well. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, I think he only lived two or three days or perhaps a week in London. And uh, because of the bad air and goodness knows what down there, he, uh, he died. And that was very sad. And the king was very upset about that. And so he, uh, as I say, he had his portrait painted. And uh, I don't know how they managed to do that if he only lived three days down in London. I don't know, but perhaps he lived a bit longer than that. I don't know. But certainly the change in lifestyle and the fetid air down in London didn't do him any good. And poor old Thomas Dard died. And uh, because the king was uh, upset about it, he decided that he would bury him in Westminster Abbey. Now, if you go to Westminster Abbey, I haven't been lucky enough to go there, but apparently there's a tomb. I got a picture of it somewhere there, but uh, he's actually buried in uh, Westminster Abbey with a tomb there to Thomas Parr, the oldest man in England who tells the dates. So I'm pretty sure that he was probably that old. So it's pretty remarkable, really. And uh, this is only a little short little video I thought I'd put out today because I haven't put one out for a while and uh, thought it was very interesting about Thomas Parr, another famous man from Shropshire. So, <laughs> I hope I live long, as long as Thomas Parr living in Shropshire. It's a very good place to come if you ever want to visit anywhere. As I say, Shropshire is a wonderful county and it's a great place to live. But anyway, that's my little story about uh, how my father got involved with Thomas Parr in his little cottages he used to make. And uh, I've known him all my life because my, my dad used to make these cottages and so I knew the story of Thomas Parr a long time. So that's why I hope you'll find that of interest and uh, hope it uh, encourages you to uh, subscribe to my videos and give me a like if you think this story is like. Now, you can look it up yourself. There's videos on it. As I say, I stole a picture from somebody who made another video, but I like to make my own videos about these things if I can. So if you like this story, give me a like. And until we meet again, it's Grandad as usual, signing off and saying bye-bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>